this now. Uh, how many are excited to be in the house of the Lord? Everybody say, the Lord is good. Lord is say, His mercy endures forever. How many hungry hearts do we have today? Are you guys ready to receive the word? Do you know that by you pulling, you open, you're saying, God, I need you to teach me. Father, reveal your word. How many are thankful he's going to teach you today? Yes. And the word says truth will come, right? Truth will set you what? Free. free. How many could get freer this morning? Yes. Amen. And we're not looking to Pastor Michael. We're looking to the Holy Spirit. We're looking to the word. And we are confident today that he's sending his word to bring deliverance, to bring freedom. And you and I are going to go to a higher level than ever before. Amen. Say this. Say, Lord, Lord I'm sitting at your feet. I'm, your feet. I'm ready, Lord. Take me further. Take me, further. Take me, farther, Take me farther than ever before. Ever before. Lord, if I'm thinking wrong, Lord, I'm thinking wrong. Change, my thinking. change my thinking. Order my thoughts. Order my your, way. your way. And I thank you, Father, thank you, Father. for helping me this morning. Me this In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put that first slide. Oh, my goodness. What are we going to talk about today? <laughs> Has anybody prayed this prayer before? Yes. <laughs> and we are going to have fun. I'm going to start. This is, just, this is going to be just to put our feet in the water today. But uh, we're going to be teaching on this over the next few weeks or however God's going to direct us. But help Jesus. I need money. Now, I know as soon as you start talking about money, people start to lock up. And they actually think, you're a preacher, you want my money. I don't want your money. Matter of fact, the Apostle Paul said it when they were given in the book of Philippians. He said, it's not that I desire a gift, it's so that fruit may abound to your account. Right? right. And there's freedom in what we're going to share. So I just ask you, encourage you today, maybe some of the things I'm going to share maybe are a little different. But how many are going to be like the Berean church? You're going to check it out from the word and say, what does God say about these things? Because when we think of money, we say money's not that important. Ministers are just out spending your money. It's all they want, you know, blah, 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 blah. But listen, wrong thinking is going to keep you sinking, right? And you and I want to renew our mind, right, to what God says about it and get a biblical perspective so that we can receive biblical results. Amen? Look at slide number two. I want you to see it here real quick because we're excited today. Because when we think about money, we think, well, Jesus hardly ever talked about money. But a matter of fact, Jesus talked more about money than he did heaven and hell combined. Jesus talked about money more than anything else except the kingdom of God. Specifically was mentioned by Christ 30 plus times and mentioned specifically some 280 times in the Bible. So when we talk about money, it's not just a matter of, well, we're just going to talk about money. Jesus talked about money and there's liberating truth that you and I are going to get. They're going to help us to elevate to a higher level. Notice what it says in the book of Luke, the fourth chapter. Look at verse number 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many love the word? Yes. Look what it says here. This is what Jesus said in the very beginning when he started to proclaim the gospel. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The word gospel means good news to the poor. He says, he goes on to say, heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovering the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. So we, we never have a problem or issue with the other parts. Healing of the broken heart, preaching of deliverance, right? Recovering of sight. But when we hear here that good news was preached to the poor, we go, well, Jesus could not really be talking about the poor, poor. Let's just look at the definition. Let the word of God speak for itself. Slide number three. The word poor means someone that's reduced to beggary. Begging, asking alms, a needy person, a pauper. That's the definition of that word. It's a very poor person, destitute of wealth, influence, position, honor, helpless. Notice the last part of this here. Powerless to accomplish an end. So a poor person, a lot of times when people teach this 
scripture here, they're talking about a person who's spiritually poor. Well, you know, you can interpret that if you want to in that direction, but I believe it's much more than that. Good news to a poor person is, by the grace of God, you don't have to be poor no more. You don't have to be in a position where you're reduced to begging, you're poor, you're des destitute, you have no influence, no honor, you're helpless, you don't have any power to accomplish an end. Jesus wants us to be able to accomplish things, yes. do things. Yes. And some people will say, well, Pastor Michael, money is not necessary. Well, we don't need money. Well, just look at this scripture here for our church family. <laughs> Because <laughs> how many love the word? Yeah. Look at Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter, verse number 19. And again, we're just starting this here. So some of you are already bracing up going, oh my goodness, he's talking about money. Listen, this is for your freedom. Yeah. These are truths that set me free. Not to just be like, oh, you know, get a $15 million home. And again, there's a lot of abuse. How many know any subject is balanced? Yeah. You know, and, and, and truly before the Lord. And we have to be careful with this. Some people say, well, you're just rich and just, you know, I don't believe in excessive, crazy, you know, just whatever, okay? But I believe you should be blessed. Yes. And in ministers, we have to be even more careful how we're representing this, right? But ministers should be well taken care of. Yes. But I don't need a 17-bedroom house with 14 right. bathrooms in it. Okay. And another house and another house. And another. I, I think that's ridiculous. Right. All right, so, but, but that, that's the, between them and the Lord. We're not going to judge anybody. No, that's, right. that's my inner conviction. I believe you should be blessed, well taken care of, yeah. right? Yeah. Ministry, we need, right? Because this is where all the blame comes, right here. Because they all look at us and say, well, we just want airplanes and we want move, you know, blah, blah, blah. So don't judge anybody, right. Right? right? My conviction is, you know, be led, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's not about the money. Right. Right. I don't have to prove my faith by having a, you know, whatever. But, but there's truth there. I want you to see it, yes. right? And uh, notice it says, it says, A feast is made for laughter, and wine is ma maketh merry, but money, what does it do? Yes. That word answer means to respond. Everybody say respond. respond. Look at that scripture over in the book of, uh, excuse me, in the Message Bible. I want you to see it. Money answers all things. It says, laughter and bread go together and wine gives sparkle to life, but it's money. Do you need, do I need yes. money? Yes. Right? Yes. You can't pay your electric bill with a big smile. No. Right? You and I, and not only that, God wants to, as we're going to see, prosper you and me so that you have more than enough so that we can support missionaries, build schools, build, build uh, more orphanages, reach out all over the world. How's that going to be funded? Not by the world. It's going to be funded by the church. God wants us to have prosperity so that we can establish his covenant on the earth. Are you guys hearing this? Everybody say, money makes the world go around. We should not be ashamed of money. Are you guys hearing this? We should not be ashamed of prosperity in any way. Right? Notice he said, he said, I came to preach the gospel to the poor. Look at Romans, the first chapter, verse number 16. Everybody say the gospel to the poor. And Jesus did that in Matthew, the 11th chapter, verse 5. He said, and, and to the poor, the gospel's preached. The poor, people that are, need help. There's help. He said, Paul said this. He said, for I am not ashamed of what? For it is what? Unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The gospel is the power of God. Jesus came to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. We should not be ashamed of the gospel. We should not be ashamed of blessing prosperity, getting a new car, getting a new suit, getting some new shoes, getting blessed. Because if you're following the Lord, as we're going to see from scripture, you will be blessed and we should not be ashamed. Amen. And the Lord told me very clearly, he said, Michael, preach this unabashedly, unashamed. Yes. 
We are not ashamed of the blood, the power of the blood, healing, the power of the Holy Spirit, and we are not ashamed that God wants to bless us. Amen. Are you guys hearing me? And we got to start renewing, as we're going to see, renewing our thinking about this. Thinking differently. Changing our thoughts. What does the Bible say? What does the Word say? I know immediately people are like, well, Pastor Michael, doesn't the Word say that the love of money, money is bad? Well, let's just look at that real quick. I just want you to see it. 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter, verse number 10. Because this is what people say. They say, money's bad. No, money's not bad. No. It said for the love. love. Everybody say the love, love of money is what? It's the root of all evil. But, but is money bad? No. We just saw over Ecclesiastes, you need money. Right. Matter of fact, we're going to see in a moment, Jesus had lots of money right. when he was on the earth. We're going to just see some scripture. Jesus had more than enough that he was giving to the poor. Amen. But see, in our minds, we just think Jesus is some beggar going around, has no money. No, Jesus was well taken care of. Amen. You're saying, Pastor, why are you teaching this? I'm teaching this by the grace of God so that our minds can get renewed and we're not ashamed of that and we start receiving the power of that gospel in our life Amen. so that you and I can prosper. Prosperity means pushing forward, moving ahead, having more than enough. Are you guys hearing me? Yep. He says, for the love of money. Notice the word for love, slide number eight. He says, the love of money. The love of money is what? The root of all evil. That means you're greedy for, right? Selfish, desire for wealth. I mean, if that's your goal, then that is wrong. Yeah. So he's saying, don't do that. Everybody say, don't do that. Don't do that. Because this is some people's goal. This is their whole life's ambition. More, 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 more. Right. Intense desire, selfish desire, right? For wealth and material gain. But look at verse number 19 here. I want you to see it. How many love, uh, verse 17, I'm sorry, verse 17. And so he goes on to say a little bit further down there. He said, charge them that are rich to repent. No. Because they're guilty of being rich. No. <laughs> it, is he, is he telling them to be guilty? Or they should be. He said, charge them that are what? Rich. 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 In, 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 in where? In this world. He didn't say, charge them that are rich in this world to repent. Because nope. they're guilty. They're wrong. What did he say? Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches. But what should they do? The living God who gives us what? He gives us what? All things to what? The source of blessing, the source of riches comes from God. And God gives us things for the pure enjoyment of them. Is it wrong to have a nice car? Is it wrong to have a nice suit if you enjoy it? God gives it to us. He gives it to us richly. He just says here, if you're rich, listen, man, don't be high-minded. Don't be prideful. What? Don't trust in uncertain riches. Trust in God. Why? He's the one who gives us richly, abundantly. Things to enjoy. Some people say, I don't believe it. Jesus wants me poor. <laughs> That's the way I've been taught all my life. God doesn't want me to have anything good, anything nice. Nope. Doesn't want me to have a nice house. If I gotta have a house, it's gotta be holes in the roof because it keeps me humble. Nope. If I gotta have a car, no air conditioning in my car. God wants me to suffer, 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 suffer. No, no. The God that we serve, as we're gonna see as our mind gets renewed, he wants to bless us and give us things because we're not trusting in them, we're not greedy for them, but he wants us to enjoy. He gives us richly all things right. to enjoy for the pure enjoyment of it. Right. Yep. Is it wrong to have a nice motorcycle like John's? No. Should we be ashamed of it? Should we go, ah, uh, ah, uh, and I have to admit, I have to be humble about it. There's been times that the Lord has blessed me in my life that I'm like, oh, I don't, 
And when I got my Tesla, I was like, I, I, I wasn't, we, we paid for it cash. We didn't, owe, we didn't steal from anybody. We were blessed by it. God supernaturally, abundantly blessed us. But you know the thought I had to deal with? What are church people going to say when they see me driving a Model S Tesla? God is good. God is good. Amen. But I had to fight that thought in my head. What are people going to think? And the Lord told me this morning, Michael, do not in any way shape. Now, we're not flaunting it. I'm not bread. I give God the glory. If God told me to get rid of it tomorrow, I would, right? Everything that we have, is, it belongs to the Lord. But the point of the man, I felt that. Freedom! Freedom! Why? If you're ashamed of it, you're cutting off the power of it. We don't flaunt these things. We don't brag about it. But we should not be ashamed. That's right. The Lord has blessed us. Amen. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes fat and he adds no sorrow to it. Right. Are you guys hearing me? Yep. Are you guys hearing me? Yes. How many love the word? Amen. Everybody say money is, money is not bad. Say money is not bad. Money is not bad. All right. Let me, I, I think I need to go here first because uh, we'll, um, it'll, it'll help us here. It'll just help us. So let's look at Matthew, the eighth chapter, verse 20, because a lot of people, the first thing they think of is say, well, you know that Jesus, he was on the earth, he was poor. Jesus was poor. He's just, he was poor, Jesus, poor, poor. But if you study the life of Jesus, he wasn't poor. How many know, as we're going to see later on, is, is when you and I are following the Lord, there's blessing that come and that when Jesus was born, the very, one of the very first things that happened to him over a period of time is that the three wise men came and, and they shook him down. They took every little thing, penny that Jesus had. <laughs> what, what did they do? They came and they brought gifts, riches, gold, frankincense, myrrh. How, how, how was Joseph, a carpenter, able to be, be led of God to go to Egypt and hide out from the... It was the blessing of the Lord that was on that family. They had, as you're going to see from the scriptures, God gave them too much. Are you guys hearing this? And so one of the big scriptures that people quote here is they'll, they'll quote this scripture and say, well, Pastor Michael, it says here in the Bible, the foxes have their holes and the birds of the air have their nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Now, let's look at that in the Message Bible so we just, just see it. But if you take the context of what's being said here, there are people that wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus was telling them, how many know there's a cost to discipleship? Right. Right? And it doesn't mean that everything's going to be rosy. Right? right? There's, there, you're going to go through some things, right? You're going to go through the water, through the fire, right? Yeah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But, you're, but you can't lose sight of God wants to bless you and then you're going to come out Amen. and you're going to come out on the other side. Amen. And so he's telling them, so Jesus would curse. He said, are you ready to rough it? So he was telling, he's, he's appealing to their, their sense of commitment. Are you, we're not staying in the best inns, you know. He said, listen, guys, it's going to be, there's, there's going to be some tough times here. It's going to be challenging. And so this is the camp scripture. Obviously, this is it. This is the scripture. Jesus was poor. He didn't have a place to, uh, to put his, any place to put his money, you know, put, put his head down. That's Jesus. But, but, but we're going to see fr from Jesus here, look at Luke the 8th chapter, verse number 2, that, that God was blessing his ministry. How in the world could Jesus have him, 12 other disciples, and, and, and then the other times, there could have been up to 70, there could have been up to 84 plus women, there could have been hundreds of people that were with him. How were they being fed? None of them had jobs. How, how were they? And notice he said, and he says, And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits, infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Look at verse number three. And he goes on to say, And Joanna, the wife of Chuaz, Ch Chuaz, right? Herod stewards, Susanna, and many others. What did they do? Which ministered unto him of what? Their substance. Of their substance, right? Look at that. Look at slide 14. These were rich people that were blessing, he had more than enough. It says, Yakana, the wife of Herod's finance minister, Kuza, da, 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 and many others, women who drew on their own wealth. Amen. Notice Jesus didn't say to those wealthy people, I can't accept it, you're rich and you're a sinner. He was thankful that, there was a, that they were wealthy 
and that they were generous. Are you guys hearing? Look at that in the message Bible, dear friend. How many love the word? Amen. And we saw that through the scripture. We see that with Elijah and Elisha, how God, there was a certain widow, uh, the, uh, the one woman there, uh, she was rich and she built a room. How many would like to be that, that person? Yes. You can support the ministry. It said Joanna's Herod's manager, and so, along with many others, who, who used their own considerable means to do what? Provide. Is it wrong no. to, to have money? No. Was Jesus broke? No. See, God was using people supernaturally, right? And, and they were, he was blessed. Right. He was so blessed. Look at this. Look at, um, look at the, uh, look at John the... Let's see, let's go to, oh, one second, Cass. Let me just make sure I get it right here. How many love the word? I know some of you are like, ah, you're crazy. But to who have the ears to hear, let them hear, you know, and just hear my rantings if it doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't bother you. Look at uh, John the 13th chapter, verse 29. Somebody's like, ah, you know, this guy's crazy, you know. But I'm just, I just want to encourage you. That there, it's not wrong. You, God wants to help you and I. Amen. Now it says here. Now let's just back up a verse, Cass. Let's break up a verse. Uh, but let's go another verse. I just want to get them in context. So I'm, I'm kind of quoting things. I don't want to go to that. Go another verse. Okay. <laughs> another verse. You guys are reading it backwards. Another verse. All right. Simon Peter Beck said that he should ask who it is, because Jesus, another verse, go up there. Isn't, you were going to go back to Genesis, the first chapter before you. <laughs> so basically Jesus said that somebody was going to betray him. And so now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of the, whom Jesus loved. That's John, right? He says, that's me. Jesus loved me. How many we could be like John? Jesus yeah, loves me. Yeah. Look at verse 24. And Peter got John's attention and he said, hey, ask him who he's speaking about. Who's going to who's gonna be the one that's going to betray him? Look at verse number 25. And then lying on Jesus' breath said, John, he said, who is it, Lord? Who's the guy who's going to betray, betray you? And Jesus answered and said, to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when I have dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of... So he said, this, that's going to be the person. And so he, he puts it in the sop, the bread, gives it to Judas. Look at verse number 27. And after the sop, what happened? Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, now get the picture. Jesus looks at him and said, that thou doest do what? Quickly. Quickly. Now this is going to tell you, this should give you all hope, how non-bright the disciples were. Right. Now get the picture now. True. There's hope for all of us. Yeah. Get the picture. They, they're sitting there, they're wondering, Jesus said, somebody's going to betray me. And they're all like, oh, who's going to betray? And Peter goes, hey, who's going to? Says, hey, John, you ask him. He's, you're close to him. And so John says, hey, who, who's going to be? And the Lord says, I'm going to dip this sop, this bread in the sop, and to whoever I give it to is going to be the one. So he does it. He dips the sop, gives it to Judas Iscariot. And, and it says, and after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest do quickly. Now look at verse 28. No man at the table knew for what. Is there hope for you and me? Yes. Are you getting the picture? Can you see it there? Yes. And then so he said, he's going to make it really. Watch. This, that, it's him. They, they give it to him, right? And what happens? Huh? And Judas, devil gets in him. And the horns pop out. His face gets really red. His neck starts spinning around. <laughs> I'm kidding. It probably wasn't like that. But, you know, all of a sudden Judas said, ah, ah, ah. we don't know. He could have done that because how ignorant and how blind for these guys could have been. Right. Judas gets up and goes, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> no, I'm sure he didn't do that, right? But, but the point of the matter is he walks out the room and all of them go, I don't know. Why is he leaving so quickly? <laughs> why is he going? Why did he speak this way to him? Why did he tell them to go do it quickly? Look at verse number 29. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag. Had the bag. What's the bag? 
It's the bag of money. That Jesus had said to him, buy those things we, we have need against the feast. Or, they thought in their bright minds, maybe Jesus said, give to the poor. Did Jesus have a bag? Most people don't think that. They just think Jesus is out there, just wandering around, you know, can't find a place to lay his head. He had a bag. And it was common practice for Jesus to give to the poor. Are yeah. yeah. you guys hearing this? Amen. Now look at John the 12th chapter, verse number 1. Everybody say, Jesus had a bag. Jesus had a bag. Isn't that awesome? He had a bag. He gave to the poor. Isn't that beautiful? He goes, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which he had been dead, or had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, verse number 2. There he made him supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was, was one of them that sat at the table with him. And verse number three, then took Mary, and this is, you know, Martha's sister, Lazarus' sister, a pound of ointment of spicknard, very costly, and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with this odor of the ointment. So and we're going to see next, this was very expensive ointment. Very expensive. Look at verse number four. Then said one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, right? Simon's son, which should betray him. We got the whole lowdown there, right? <laughs> we don't want to forget it. He said, he goes, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Now look at here, slide number 15. I want you to see it here. He said 300 pence. The Bible refers to the Daenerys as a day's wages for a common laborer. In John 12, 5, this valuable ointment was worth 300 pence or a denarii, which would be the average way for 300 days of labor, also, almost what a worker would earn in one year. So just say the average, say somebody's making 60,000, 70,000, you know, that's your wage. That ointment costs sixty, seventy thousand dollars, and Mary walked up to Jesus and opened up that ointment and splashed it all over him. And Judas, what did he do? He goes, "This is a waste." Was it a waste? No. Not according to. And again, we can go to the other side of the coin. It wasn't wrong. Some people say, well, they're just wasting the money. Are they? We don't know. That's why we can't judge. They're, that's between them and the Lord. But I'm here to tell you, just open the door of the blessing. We want more, right? Jesus didn't say, hey, stop. Hey, 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 hey. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to receive such a big gift. No. He said, kumbaya, Mary, kumbaya. Splashy, splashy, Mary, Mary. Woo, he's like, woo, and the whole house yeah. is getting filled with this seventy, eighty thousand dollars worth of stink Burn. that's only gonna last for just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And so Judas goes back, has to go back to the scripture, <laughs> and he says, Why wasn't he? Here he is. He goes, Why wasn't it sold? Why wasn't it and given to the poor? That's better use of that. That's why we can't judge. Because right. naturally we all think that, well, why don't you just, why don't you just do that? You know, just sell it, give it to the poor. How many know God can take care of you and the poor? Yes. We yes. limit God with our thinking. We're like, well, yeah, eh, eh. <clears throat> but God can do that, and he can do that, and he can do that, and he can do that. He is infinite. Yes. And we limit God with our thinking. Are you guys hearing this? I know for some of you are like, I didn't hear this before. But this is in the Bible. Am I reading the Bible? Yes. He says, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pences and given to the poor? Look at verse number six. <laughs> this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And he was the one holding the bag. And he stole 
from the bag. <laughs> Are you guys hearing this? What is that saying? Now, I don't have my wallet here today. But just hypothetically, I had lots of bills in my wallet. And I said, Gina, hold my wallet. And she was, not that you are, a Judas. And she's like, man, pastor's loaded here. He's loaded. She would be more tempted to go, he's not going to notice a little, because he's got, there's a bag. If Jesus was just clinking around three coins, how would he be comfortable stealing from it? He had a bag. Is it all right to have a bag? Yes. 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 Look at here. I want you to see it here. Look at uh, slide, uh, slide number 16. I'm going to love the word. Amen. He says, he didn't say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and he was charged in charge of the money bag and would steal part of what was put in it. He wanted that money to get in there, so what? He could steal more, but he was taking. How many can see this? this, this, this can you see it? And if we, for the sake of time, when they were, when Jesus was crucified, before that, he had this beautiful robe that the Roman soldiers, they gambled for his robe. That'd be like today, if something happened to me, I'm on the ground, and you're like, hey, hey, everybody, hey, hey, everybody, Pastor Michael's black, whatever kind of coat this is, it looks awesome. <laughs> and, and Dave, you can't just take it. We got we to gotta gamble for it here. No, don't tear it up. Don't tear it up. That's what they wanted to do. Jesus had a nice robe. Are you guys hearing me? How many are getting this? Yes. Can, you, can, you, can you get your mind removed, uh, renewed in this, in this way? Can you see it a little differently? Look what it says in uh, Psalms 35, 27. We're trying to renew our mind here. Right? We're just trying to get, what does God say about this? Okay? Look what it says in Psalms 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which likes to beat down his people. No, <laughs> no he has pleasure yes. in the prosperity yes. of us. Yes. Is it wrong to be blessed? No. no, God wants to bless you. He wants to get it to you to get it through you. Yes. Are you guys hearing me? He said, let them shout. We should be shouting. Somebody said, I don't believe it. It's there. We're going to show you some more scriptures. You should go home and chew this for about six hours. He has pleasure. How any good parent do you want your child to be barely getting by? No. You want your kid to do better than you. Yes. Right? Isn't that the goal as a parent? You're not like, I don't know. I don't want them to be too blessed, you know. You want to be blessed. Yes. God has pleasure. In the prosperity of his people. Look at it says in John 10, 10. Look at the Amplified. How many love the word? Amen. How many love the word? Amen. How many of God has pleasure in the prosperity? Yes. Again, I'm, again I'm not, we're not taking up another offering. I just want to expand your thinking a little bit. That's all. There's a whole other side to this. And if you're rejecting it, you're rejecting what you need. Right. He said, I came to preach the gospel to the poor. And if you're struggling here, don't throw this out. Because it all starts here. Believe in God wants to bless me. This is what it started happening to me in Jordan. We just started, we're blessed. We didn't have nothing. We were sowing, we were giving, we were tithing, we had nothing. We had two nickels, two nickels. But it's been the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Beyond our job, beyond the size of our church, the blessing of God. Look what it says. The thief, this is Jesus speaking, the thief comes in order, only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the devil's business. Jesus said, I am come that they may have and enjoy life. I know people say, well, money's not everything. Tell that to a little kid when you can't afford to buy him an ice cream. Does anybody enjoy 
air condition yeah. as much as I do, right? You ever had a car with no air condition? Amen. <laughs> Changing in Jesus' name. <laughs> but how many, do you enjoy it better? Yeah. Jesus said, I've come that they may have and enjoy life. And not only that, have it in abundance to the full. But not only there, God wants you and I to have overflow blessings till it overflows on those around you. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Are you guys hearing this? Whew, look what it says in Je Jeremiah 29.11, the NIV version. I must say, he says, charge them that are rich. I speak that I'm rich. Some people say, oh, no, you're not. Yeah, by the grace of God, by the word, I'm rich, I'm blessed. Amen. I got too much. Especially folks that are about to retire. I tell you, poverty thinking will get on you. Well, they start locking up. They just start getting, some of these words will start coming out of your mouth. We can't do that anymore. That's the devil restricting you. You need to say, blessed. Do whatever I want to do. Free. Prospering. It's, it's a thinking. I can't buy a new car. This is going to be the last car before I die. Don't even think such things. Not me. They're making new ones all the time. And if I want a new one, I'll get a new one. You're saying, I don't know what that pressure is. You know, we got to free up. I remember one time the Lord had me go to that Mazzaro's. And uh, I don't use to buy lunch meat there. And they had the prosciutto's and the salamis. And it was like twice, three times as much as it is in other stores, you know? The big W in um, <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> hey, I shopped there, brother. I, but you know what I'm saying? And you go there. I remember I, I went over to the meat part department, and I looked at it, and I go, oh, I ain't buying this. This is 30 bucks a pound. And the Lord grabbed the back of my neck. Not that I felt it, but in my heart, I just, he said, go over there and stare at those prices. And two, you're not afraid of them. Yeah. I remember when I got a Corvette years ago, and uh, the Lord had me do that. I started looking at Corvettes, and I'm like, oh. and there was so much, I, we couldn't afford it. <laughs> Naturally, it seemed like, oh. and the Lord said, you look at those prices. And, and of course, God gave us a favorable deal, but he said, look at that. Don't be intimidated by that price. See, you're restricted here. You're limited here. We're limiting God here. God says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to extract every penny from you. <laughs> this is what people think. I am going to use you and abuse you. No, he says, the plans that I have for you are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a what? Future. Look at it says in Proverbs 13, 22. How many, how many of that's God, that's God's thinking toward us? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, Pastor Michael, that's not, my Christian belief don't believe in that. I don't believe in any of that prosperity. So blah, blah, blah. Listen, don't go there. Don't go there. Just go with the word. Don't even go with Pastor Michael. Don't go with the TV preacher. Just pray about what we're saying in the word. Let the word become alive to you. Yeah, yeah. He says, a good man leaves an incredible, insurmountable debt no. No. to his children's children. <laughs> You ever have that happen to you? Somebody dies and you're like, we, we had to do that one time and somebody died and it's like, we had to take out, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I gotta, we gotta pay for the, I got what? And there was zero, zero inheritance. Nothing, zero. I was like, now I'm gonna say, if you gotta do it, you do it. Because they didn't know any better. But God's plan for the righteous is that when we die, not only do we leave an inheritance to our children, but to our children's children. Why? The wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. So I'm confessing it right now. When I die, I'll have not only more than enough for me, I'll have extra for my kids. And not only that, my grandkids. Some of you are like, you're talking pretty big. I'm talking the word. But see, we get all locked up. I'm just hoping that I could just burn, squeak by a living to my last breath because no the truth will set you free Amen. and starts here starts here 
That's why the Lord told me. He said, Michael, and that's why I'm, I'm preaching this strong. He said, unabashedly preach this. Preach it with absolutely no shame, unabashedly. And that's what I'm doing. <laughs> how, many, how many call that for you? Look what it says here in Job, Job 36, 11. Can you guys just get your mind a little bit more renewed? We're doing scrub, scrub, scrub right now. We're just, yes. um, and, and, and look these scriptures up. And don't get mad at me. And don't come up to me afterward and say, I don't believe it. You're an idiot. I'll bless you in your poverty. Bless me in my richness. Amen. I, I won't have it. You know, people get all mad about these kind of things. Listen, whatever you think, I still love you. Can you still love me? Can we do that? Can we disagree agreeably? If they obey and serve him, speaking about serving God, what's going to happen if you obey and serve God? Oh, oh, time out, time out. Who said that? He said, if you obey and serve him, this is a benefit. They shall spend their days in poverty. And you will have a miserable, miserable life. No. He said, if you obey him and you follow him and you serve him with passion and purpose and you put God first in your life, you will spend your days in prosperity. Yeah. Yeah. Did I say that? No. In your years in pleasure, good things. Yes. <laughs> Look at the word for prosperity there. Slide number 12. I just want you to see it. I'm going to love the word. Are we getting this today? Yes. The word prosperity there means good. You're going to have good days, pleasant, agreeable, excellent, rich, happy, prosperous. You'll spend your days enjoying the blessing of the Lord. Are you guys hearing this? Yes. Everybody say, that be, me. that be me. Look what it says here in Matthew 6, 33. If you put God first, you can't lose, right? right. Some people are like, well, it's not working for me. Are you really putting the Lord first in your finances? You can tell, you can tell where people's love are. Just check their checkbook. I told you, first thing I do, very first thing, phew, honor the Lord. I don't think pizza furs. We believe in the principle of tithing here. Unabashedly. Doesn't mean you're legalistically. God will meet you where you are. But every preacher I know that, that has their salt, they, they, Brother Hagen taught it as well too. And uh, the principle of tithing. Tithe belongs to the, to the Lord. Amen. The storehouse. Where are you getting fed? And Brother Hagen would teach, give it, that should be your local church. If you have a local, if you don't, then you, you know, but you should be tithing to your local church. If you're going to get married, you can't call the TV minister and say, hey, I need to get married. Will you marry me? You're in the hospital. They'll pray for you. There's something about here. You, you yes, need to soak. Yes. And, but how many believe God could do that? You could, you could tithe to your local church and have more than enough to bless all these other ministries out there too. Amen. Some of them will be like, well, we're going to just divide it up here. No. God's able to give you more, right? You have plenty, more than enough. Amen. <laughs> he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What's going to happen? Oh, <laughs> is there adding in the kingdom? Yes. Yep. Are you guys hearing this? Yes. Look at it says in Deuteronomy 29, 9. Are we getting it today? Yes. You're going to see a lot of this principle is putting the Lord, honoring the Lord first. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that you what? Is it God's against you prospering? No, no not at all. Look what it says in um, uh, Psalms 112, verse 1 through 3. How many love the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. How many love the Lord? Amen. Now, again, don't get mad at me. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just the messenger <laughs> But this is good news. Yes. Does God want you to have more than enough? Yes. Yes. Is it okay for you to prosper? Yes. Yep. So, and don't, don't base your belief in God's word based on your experience because you'll always stay there. You have to go, what does the word say? And by faith, you reach out and go, hey, that's me. God, you have pleasure in the prosperity of your servants. I'm your servant, Father. Thank you, Lord. Are you guys hearing me? It says, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. How many can claim that? Yes. How many call that for your kids? Yes. It says, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. How many, how many yes. think that, right? Yes. And he says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Yes. And his righteousness endures forever. 
Is, it, is, is this just a byproduct of passionately serving God and putting him first? Wealth and riches, your seed is blessed. But it starts out, he delighteth greatly in, his, in God. He delights greatly in his word. But he says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Amen. Everybody say, that be me. That be Isn't that good? Yeah. How many like that? That's good. Yeah. You're putting the Lord first. You're honoring the Lord. And it, and it just says, God's not, he gives us richly all things. To, God's not opposed to this. Some of you are sitting there, well, Pastor Michael, I'm not that educated. Education has nothing to do with this. No. Pastor Michael, I don't know nobody. You know the somebody. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Are you guys hearing me? Look at 2 Chronicles 26, 5. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> We're almost done. Some of you are like, and you feel like you're in a dentist chair. You're like, what are you guys start talking about this stuff here? I want to help you. I want to encourage you. This is talking about the king here. It says, he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had the understanding and the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord God, sought the Lord, God made him what? Prosper. prosper. Look at the word for prosper here, slide number 13, a little different. As long as he's putting the Lord first, we're seeing this principle coming up here, seek the kingdom first, right? He says, as long as he, God caused him to prosper, you're advancing. Can you advance in your old age? Yes. Even when you're 60, 65, 70, yes. right? You're on a tight budget, seemingly naturally. Can, can God... Can you, does it disqualify you from prospering? No. But Pastor Michael, you don't understand. I'm all restricted. No, no. Get that thinking out of your head. That's thinking, thinking. Start to look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm rich. I'm blessed. I can do whatever I want to do. I can travel the world in Jesus' name. I could go because I'm rich. I'm blessed. I'm anointed. I serve God. I put God first. Wealth and riches is in my house in Jesus. I'm, speak that to yourself. Don't sit there and say, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Is it going to be between bread and milk this month? I, I don't know. No, start confessing. Even though you might be in a tight spot, start confessing what the Word says about you. Amen. And if you don't have a bag yet, go get yourself a bag. <coughs> and don't just get a little bag. Get a big old bag. Yeah. <laughs> See, God said He'll bless your storehouse. In the Deuteronomy, you need to have a storehouse. You should have a savings account. Open a savings account, something, and just trust God. It's going to, God's going to bless the savings. God's going to bless it. Are you hearing me? He said he prospered. That means to, to prosper, to advance, make successful, push forward. Can you start pushing forward yes. as you're seeking the Lord? Yes. Is there supernatural? And we're going to see as we start continuing teaching this, there's supernatural blessing that's on our life. There's, there's, an, there's a favor, there's a power, there's an anointing to get wealth. Not get by, get wealth. Get, get, that's on us. The blessing of Abraham that was on Abraham that caused Abraham to be rich is on us. That's right. Are you guys hearing this? Look at Psalms uh, 23, guys. Almost done. You guys doing okay? Yeah. We're getting it this morning, right? I hope I'm helping you. Hope you again, if you're just like, ah, just look over the scriptures. Go online, look at it again. Look at Psalms. This is very familiar. Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. I shall not. I shall not. Look at that in the New Living Bible. How many are glad the Lord's your shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Look at that in the Message Bible. Mm, we love the word. Oh, God, my shepherd. I don't need anything. Hallelujah. Isn't that a great place to be in? Do you ever have that happen to you? Go, I, I got everything I want. I'm just so blessed. I just, I'm blessed. It got so good to me. Now look at verse number two. Look at verse two. Stay with me, guys. Stay with me. <laughs> he makes me to lie down in green pastures. How, how many glad he doesn't make you lie down in some old burnt up field? <laughs> you know, you get hurt. And it's, he's, he leads us beside calm, still waters. Look at verse number th three. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse number five, four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. How many like that? How many go, yeah, 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 yeah. We, got, we, we shout on those, right? Well, look at the next verse. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. 
Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup barely has anything to drink out of it. <laughs> what does it say? Is, is, is that the blessing of the Lord? That you got so much and you're so blessed that your cup is overflowing. That's the God that we serve. He came to give life, right? To the full till it overflows. He said, Thou he said your cup overflows. That doesn't sound like barely get by to me. It means like I got so much, I go, here, wait, have some. And I go, well, I still got some more. Here, here, here you go. Here you go, Mom. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. That's, 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 that's the blessing of the Lord. Not enough to get by, but to have so much that you're able to be a blessing and not be thinking in your mind, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, you're just the liberal soul. You're just, you're just channel. The, the, the spout is opened up, and you're just like, you're not even... <laughs> You know, it's funny when I see people, like, sometimes people when they tithe, you know, it's like $2.33. Bump it up to three bucks. You'll feel better. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm ready to sound free. Yeah. All right, you guys are about ready to stone me, but I, I'm blessed. <laughs> Look at Psalms 118.25. Liberal soul, blessed, generous. The liberal soul shall be made fat. Look at Psalms 118, verse 25. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. What did he need? What did he need some saving from? Poverty. I beseech thee. What's he praying? Prosperity. Send now prosperity. Yes. Is it wrong to pray? No. Do you, do you guys remember my title slide there, Cassie? Could you put it back up again? Is it wrong? Put that first slide. Oh! Nope. <laughs> now, now, do you see this? Now, put the slide, put that sound back up, Cassie. <laughs> he says, oh, he, this guy's going through a tough time. I beseech thee, O oh Lord, I beseech thee, send now. Now, I need it now. Is it wrong to ask God to send prosperity? Why did he put that in the Bible? But most people, I've actually talked to people, and they're like, you go, they're like, I go, what's going on? What can we pray for you about? And, and they, they literally, they can't pay. They, they're, 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 their life is just totally, they got nothing, zero. I go, well, we can ask the Lord to help you with your rent or whatever. And they go, no, I don't want to bother God with that. You ever hear people? They, they go, no, no, I can't, I can't. I feel like I'd be selfish asking the Lord to help me. The psalmist wasn't selfish. He said, Lord, I need help. Send prosperity now. I need it. Why? Because it's not wrong. You need to be blessed, not just for you, for your needs to be met, because God wants to meet your needs, but God wants to bless you so that you can be that blessing, having more than enough. Is it wrong to pray, Lord, send prosperity? Was Jesus poor? Did Jesus have a bag? Was there more than enough in that bag? Are you guys hearing me today? We're going to talk more about this. So don't, you know, so if you're like, man, Pastor, you just really opened it up today. That's good. Next week we'll come and we'll get some more and we'll help you out a little bit more. Because it all starts here. You've got to start thinking this thing here. And the first thing you've got to think is he came to preach the gospel to the poor. And you got to just get that thinking out of your head. Wait a minute. Push it out. Push it out. Push it out. And go, wait a minute here. Okay. Lord, I'm needy. I'm broke. But what's, what's good news to the poor person? You, you don't got to be poor no more. Matter of fact, the Bible says Jesus became poor so that you and I might become rich. Yep. That doesn't make sense to our mind. It doesn't make sense to our theology a lot of, because it's wrong. Grandma didn't teach it like this. Mama didn't teach it like this and whatever. So that's what the Bible teaches. And if you're not your mind's not getting renewed and you're not seeing it, you'll never partake of that. Right. Just like the same thing. You can go, well, I don't know if God wants to heal. You can see it from the scriptures, but if you can't go in the word and go, he wants me to be well, then by his stripes we were healed. Mm -hmm. But if you keep going, well, I don't know if it's God's will for me to be healed, you'll never partake of that benefit of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Another benefit of the gospel is God, he preached the gospel to the poor, to those that are begging. They didn't have enough to, to live. You know what was wrong? If you read over in the gospel, the, the, the letter of John, 
and you, it says, say, say Bear came up to me, and he's hungry, and he's thirsty, and he has a need. And I know he has a need. And I turn around and say, go, be filled, be blessed. The Lord said, I'm bad. I'm wrong. I'm sending him away with just words. Be blessed. God bless you, Bear. Ha have a good day. I know you're starving, but, you know. No, no, no. What, what did God say we should do? Try to help somebody, right? Yeah. right? If, we, if we can, right? How much more God? That's his heart. He wants to help us. Lord, send prosperity. Lord, help me. Just bow your heads, guys. You guys are awesome today. And, and I know some of you are like, oh, I don't know. About, but so don't go there. Just think about the word. Think about the word. Think about the word. Let the word get in your heart. Pray about it. Don't go by what I said. But I believe the Lord wants to set people free. God wants to help people. God wants to help people. Just right now, just right now, just start worshiping the Lord. Just start thanking the Lord. And you can just pray this prayer. Say, Father God, Lord, you, you heard what Pastor said today. Lord, I want to know if it's real and true. I'm hungry, Lord. I want to know truth. Holy Spirit, lead me into this truth. If there's something I'm not seeing or that I need to see in a greater way, Show me. Bring illumination. Revelation. I'm open, Lord. Because I know from the scriptures he's been talking about that you want to bless me. You want me to be prosperous. You want me to have more than enough so that I can be a blessing to those that are around me. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my heart's cry. And I am not ashamed of the gospel the gospel to the poor I'm not ashamed of it the blessing of the Lord makes rich and you add no sorrow to it thank you Lord that you have so much that you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus thank you Lord for the abundance of heaven that's flowing through me to those that are around me, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, Sister Jordana. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Brother Brian, can you just come say grace over our lunch real quick, please? Hallelujah. So again, we just invite you all to come back and uh, have some lunch with us or just fellowship if you don't want to eat. Father God, we just thank you for this. Thank you.